Building Great Coaches, Continuing Education. In this video series, I've been talking about how to find, prepare, and train coaches for your gym. The training process for coaches doesn't end. Despite what your certificate says, your duty as a coach is to find methods that will help your clients reach their goals. Because every client has different goals, we'll never run out of methods to explore. Earlier in this series, I said that a coach's education should be method agnostic. That means coaches should know how to coach before they're taught what to coach. A good coach can coach anything. I remember working with my first client. He was a college soccer player and a high school 800 meter runner. I'd sold my services on my education. I had a four year degree, three international certifications, including the CSCS and a bunch of seminars. I spent five years preparing to train this kid. And all I could think about before our first session was, what do I actually do? Nearly 20 years later, I was asked to coach a kid's hockey team. I knew nothing about hockey, but I knew a lot about coaching kids. I'd already been coaching kids for 20 years at that point. And the hockey organization didn't have much choice. I had free time, thanks to running a great business, and seemed to care about the kids who showed up to play. They really had no one else, and frankly, a lot of these kids needed financial support to play and they knew that I would probably give it. So I laced up. Now, five years after that, I'm still coaching hockey. While other teams in our organization are folding because they don't have enough players, our team has a waiting list. Our little team of misfits has a full bench. Our kids don't quit playing hockey. And I still know less about hockey than any other coach in the league and less than most of the parents because I know how to coach. Now I coach business owners. Actually, I coach the coaches of business owners, the mentors at Two Brain Business. Some of those mentors are gym owners and some aren't. I can coach them effectively because I know how to coach. And I co-founded Two Brain Coaching with Josh Martin to help others learn too. Good coaches start by learning principles, not methods. You can read Josh's article on the subject if you click the link below this video. It's called Methods versus Principles. Good coaches keep a beginner's mindset. You can read another of Josh's articles by clicking the second link below this video called Beginner's Mind. Then the coach determines the best method to help his or her clients. For many of us, that was CrossFit. But great coaches first learn to deliver constantly varied functional movement at high intensity to one client at a time. Their mentors, the head coach at their gym or the owner, controls the variables of their education. And one variable that adds infinite complexity is training a group of people. So we teach coaches to deliver simple yet functional training one-on-one -on -one first. That usually happens by using the gym's on-ramp program. After that, the coach must become skilled at leadership and group control. He or she must extend coaching from one to one to one to one to eight, meaning that eight people still get a one-on-one -on -one experience in a group setting. Then the coach must learn another variable, how to program for a single client's individual needs. And then fourth, the coach must learn how to program for a group's collective needs using data and progress reports. No more hard for the sake of hard workouts or no more randomness. And there's more after that, but at each stage, coaches must learn more than exercise technique. Improving a coach's snatch from a seven to an eight will yield far less value for their clients than improving their leadership from a four to a seven. Let's talk about mentorship and development. Like their clients, coaches must have a coach. Lead coaches or mentors must identify a coach's weakest link and prescribe a path to improving it. As a numbers guy, I was always drawn to graphs and force curves and research and about torque and leverage, but a good mentor told me this, no one cares how much you know until they know how much you care. So I worked on my smiling and greeting. I started hugging people and as those improved, people listened more carefully to my message and improved more quickly. Continuing education for coaches therefore must include the whole coach's toolkit, both the left brain skills, technique, data, analytics and research, and the right brain skills, empathy, charisma, support must be strong or the coach will limit his or her potential to help clients. If you have a head coach at your gym, he or she should look at your staff evaluation forms and ask, what is the greatest opportunity to improve this coach right now? And coaches should look at their client progressions and ask, 
What's the greatest opportunity to help each client reach his or her goals faster? Then they should acquire those skills. That could mean nutrition, it could mean yoga, it could also mean taking a Dale Carnegie course. Who pays for continuing ed for coaches? What's your budget? Who are the best providers? You can download our free Entrepreneurialism 101 guide by clicking the link below this video.